What is up, my tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Got some more of this Wilds of Eldraine ahead of us. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all your magic card needs. Pick one, pack one. We've opened Yenna, Red Tooth, Regent. This card is pretty fun. Very fun, even. Lots of good enchantments in the format that you can copy. Uh, a lot of them are auras, right? A lot of them are roles that you can copy. Now, this ability is sorcery speed, but she does untap herself if it is an aura, so you can do some cool things with this. Uh, one of the better enchantments, actually, in this pack, the Hopeful Vigil. This is one of White's best commons, easily. Just so much value, does so many things in the format. What else are we losing out? Bitter Chill, Gadwicks. I mean, if you just wanted to win the draft, I think you first pick the Vigil. But why not try to have a little fun and take the Yenna here? Into a Feral Encounter. Okay, this card is also pretty good. Actually, we have a few good choices here, don't we? They're both green. A couple of choices, I guess. Tough Cookie is fantastic. Such good value. You get two foods, and then the cookie itself can turn your uh, other non-creature artifacts into big beaters, so... This one's really, really good. Again, I bet you if you wanted to win, you take the tough cookie here. But Feral Encounter, I haven't had the chance to actually play with. I've had it played against me, and it seems just very nice, right? Two green. Generally, you're going to hit a creature that you can cast that turn, but then it's a fight, or it's a punch effect, right? Yeah, it's a punch. So you do need a creature on the battlefield already, but if you do, you can just kill something. So it's just like a two-for-one often enough. I mean, I guess Tough Cookie is safer and is also a two-for-one, but let's take the Feral Encounter here, I think. Uh -huh, kitty Cat. Okay, into a pack that doesn't have any straight-up red or green card that I want. Or sorry, white or green card that I want. Griffin Airy is cute. Uh, it is obviously nice with food, but I don't think it's an actual good card in the format. Though we could try to draft around it. I mean, why not? Let's go off a little bit of the deep end. I know the format is still fresh, but... Well, actually, you know what? Griffin Aries wheeling. What am I talking about? I shouldn't take that now. Let's take, like, Ruby or Gravity Giant. Actually, I guess I could take Prism, too. Do some cool Prism stuff. But Prism and Airy seem like cards that generally will. Let's just take the Ruby. It's a good enough card. Into... There's a Knight of Doves here for the enchantment style deck. I've not seen this card do a lot of work. I've tried drafting it multiple times. And um, oftentimes it just immediately dies, which is fine. It does have a high target on its head because the potential value. But uh, even when it doesn't die, I just haven't had it do too much work. Um, there's like a Ferocious Werefox here, that could be okay, it does have that monster roll, and then a 4-3 body afterwards. Ginger Boot's been really good. I think the main thing you should be doing in this format is drafting like an aggro deck, or a way to try to stop an aggro deck. The most success I've had is with like red-white aggro. Uh, why do I feel like I should just be taking this Ginger Brute? And the thing is, Ginger Brute's still really good with Hyena because you can throw a bunch of rolls all around, you know? Right, let's take this Besotted Knight here. This is another, again, a common that just doesn't look all that amazing, but it's just so good. One mana for a royal roll is fantastic, and then the 3-3 three, three body to boot has been really nice. Okay, you know what? We could do some Season of Growth stuff, too. This card has very high potential. Um but generally tends to underperform, I think. So remember, most rolls do not trigger the whenever you cast a spell that targets it. Now, some do. The Besotted Knight, um, for example, does not, right? Create a roll token attached to target... Wait. Create a roll... Wait. I know the Werefox works with this. Uh, well, well, anyways, let's just take it. We'll see which ones work. <laughs> As we get a Kellen's Light Blades. This is only when you target a creature you control, though, right? Yeah. Light Blades is still good removal here. Okay, the Wear Fox. Create a monster token attached to target creature. Yeah. Create a monster roll attached to target creature you control. Create a royal roll. Yeah, okay. So both the Besotted Knight and the uh, Wear Fox work with Season of Growth. But things that just attach 
Um, rolls do not work. Now, I was just talking about how good the where Fox is, uh, would be here, but this is an easy root rider, root rider fawn. If you're playing green, I think you want basically as many fawn as you can pick up. It's a good early blocker for all the aggressive strategies. What are you doing, cat? And, um, yeah, ramps and fixes you, so this is a good start. A good start to a, well, I don't know if I've drafted too many green-white auras slash enchantment decks, but the most fun I've had with Yenna is with, like, um, what do you call it? Um, Utopia Sprawl and, like, a way to bargain away things. Because you can effectively tap the first forest that has Utopia Sprawl on it, make a new Utopia Sprawl in an untapped forest, so it doesn't really cost that much mana to go off. Here we go. When, when this enters, you make a roll attached to another target creature. So that doesn't work. And the wording is actually a little bit awkward here, isn't it? Create a royal roll token attached to target creature you control. Create a royal roll token. No, see, this sounds like it doesn't work with Season of Growth. Because the spell you're casting is a sorcery. Well, I guess I guess the sorcery targets the creature. No, no, this works. Okay, yes. The wording is confusing, but we'll get there. Bestial Bloodline, I don't think very good. We did wield the Griffin Airy. Do we want to take that? Probably not. I'm guessing if we're going to go with this enchantment deck, the Slumbering Keep Guard is probably a little bit better for us. Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature, this is a sorcery spell that targets a creature. Yes. Yes, okay, so that, that's, the, that's the difference here. Charmed Clothier, for example, um, is a trigger that attaches to a creature. Yes. Okay, we figured it out. So, for example, Charm Clothier would not trigger Season of Growth besides the Scry. Um, Basada Knight Adventure would trigger the Season of Growth for the card draw. Boom. Took me a minute, but uh, I figured it out. Alright, that was actually a good pack one for a green-white Aras deck, and now we're getting the best Wrath in the format. Um, I've actually had this card once or twice in, like, my aggro decks. And it's really good in the aggro decks, too. It's one, like... Ah, they keep making these wrath effects these days that are just good everywhere to... I don't, I don't know why, but... What was the other one? There was one recently where each player sacrifices between, like, 0 and 13 creatures. So even in your aggro deck, you know, you were usually swarming, and you would have more creatures than the opponent. And you could just do it for, like, 2. This one, if you have it in an aggro deck, your creatures presumably are going to be smaller, like, you know, one, two power. And so when your opponent tries to stabilize with big creatures, you just kill everything that has power, three, four, or greater. Ah, <sighs> Not a big fan of these type of wraths, but card is very good, so we will take it. And to the Virtue of Courage. It's a cool card. It's not a good card. I mean, it's completely reasonable. Well, sorry, I take that back. It's fine, right? You play this for the adventure, and that's it, basically. Uh, and then sometimes if you have, like, I guess the catapults are good with it, but for the most part, that's a pass. This is a fantastic red pack, though. Man, Monstrous Rage, Frenzy, and Courage, plus the uh, catapult I was talking about. For us, we have another Fawn, or another Besotted Knight, or even another Ginger Brute. Mm. Once again, I kind of lean towards taking the Fawn. Over Besotted Knight. I think I'm going to do that. Ramble Familiar. This card's okay. I don't think it's as good as taking a tough cookie here. Mm, do we want Curse of the Were Fox over Cookie? No, Cookie's really good. We'll want to pick up a few different ways to get um, maybe some artifacts or something. But even just by itself, if you don't have too many other artifacts, this card is nice. Make sure we get that. Hey, there's Sir Armont. The green-white 
namesake uncommon. Wow, another frenzy here. The red deck we're passing in this pod is going to be kind of sick, but oh well. Red Tooth Genealogist is very good as well. Again, so this is another one that doesn't trigger the card draw of Season of Growth, but still good. Actually, I, I wonder if the Verdant Outrider is worth running in this deck. Like, if you just slap on one roll on it, you know, it's usually going to become at least a 5-3. Oh, Parallel Lives. Wow, that's fun. One or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many. And the... Uh, <laughs> the rolls are tokens, though that doesn't work, because I think they have to enchant the same one, but... I mean, there's nothing else here for us anyways. It's just cool to have. Damn, another fawn. Okay. Well, now with three fawn... <laughs> hey, there's the uh, Utopia Sprawl. With three fawn, I don't need to be taking any more. Um, and we can just focus on getting the good top end cards. Yeah, a couple of gluttons probably would be good here. I guess the two unveiled guides also not bad if we have a bunch of the roll creation cards, right? Genealogist instantly turns on celebration. Clothier instantly turns on celebration. Sir Armont. Night of the Sweet's Revenge. It's probably not going to make this deck. We only have that one food right now. Well, I guess technically Ginger Brute too, but... I liked this card when the format first came out, and then... Yeah, this needed to be like 3 mana, plus the 7 mana activated ability isn't even good. Right? There's no trample introduced. It's a sorcery, which I guess that makes sense. So we get another ginger brute here. I mean, I guess if I get a couple more ginger brutes or something. Um, I guess our break the spell isn't good. Oh, I want to note something about break the spell. I didn't realize at first that if you kill an opponent's token, you get to draw a card. If a permanent you controlled or a token was destroyed this way, draw a card. Reading is tech. All right, last few pickups. Into an Archon of the Wild Rose. Wow, I'm really glad I took that Yenna over the quote-unquote correct play because we have been rewarded extraordinarily. Actually, what were our rare opens? Yenna, Expel, and Wild Rose here? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good indeed. Okay. And this card's just nuts. Worst case scenario, it's a 4-4 flying for 4. And then, yeah, the ability is kind of grody. Ooh, that's a nice one. We would really like the Curse of the Werefox too, but the Acolyte's just a little bit too good. We have a couple of bombs that are really nice to grab back, right? Especially just like the Archon we picked up. So the first mode of the adventure is great. And then it's a 3-mana 2-2 two -two draw card. Uh, I think Goblin Bombardment's very good in the format. I think Bolt is great. But yeah, Curse and Fox for us passed again. Royal Treatment. Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Those are both fantastic. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What is better here? I think Welcome to Sweet Tooth is one of the best green uncommons for sure, but so is Royal Treatment. And I suppose if I have this many good creatures to protect, it might be better to take the Royal Treatment here. We did actually end up getting a decent bit of food synergy, though. Yeah, I think this has got to be Royal Treatment. It's so good. Wow. A second season of regrowth, a second tough cookie. Is this uh, Night of the Sweets Revenge actually getting good? Sadly, this is not a great up the beanstalk deck, but I still like that card. I don't think we've seen a glutton. 
gosh, I kind of want to take the second season. But how can I say no to Tough Cookie? In fact, Season of Growth might even wheel. There's another nice pack. Glory, Hopeful Vigil, Return Triumphant. Triumphant's really good with, like, Tough Cookie. <laughs> we don't have any real synergies with the Hopeful Vigil, right? I mean, I guess it's good with Yenna. But Yenna's already good in our deck. Eh, it's probably still right to take the Vigil, though. Casket, Takedown. Another nice choice here. Uh, I think I like the Takedown a little bit more. As this one also triggers the Season of Regrowth. Moment of Valor is not bad. Three enchantments at its base, and then one, two, three, four. Okay, so these slumbering keep guards are probably not good. Five. I mean, the Yenna can make more. So, I mean, it's our, our enchantment count's not that low, but at the end of the day, these are just kind of medium one ones. I think the ginger boots are still better here. In fact, I don't even know if we want the ginger boots either. Maybe we want none of those one drops. I was hoping to get one of these because we hadn't had a good chance to take one, and that's the Troublemaker Oof. Oof. It's just a 2-2 two -two with upside, but the upside is so nice. ton of good enchantments and artifacts you want to be blowing up. Man, nobody wants those fawn. That's the fourth fawn. I am hoping that we get the second season of growth back. In fact, season of, if I get both seasons of growth, then the best bestial bloodline actually becomes a little bit better. It's like a recurrable targeted effect. Okay. I'm a little bit more tempted to run this card, even though I don't think it's good. I always say you shouldn't run a bad card to make a good card better or something. Which is what I would be doing with this double season of growth. Huh. So yeah, 16 lands is going to be sufficient here with the Utopia Sprawl and the 3 Fawn. I guess it could just be the Outrider that gets cut here. How many ways do I have to target my creatures? Cast a spell. So one, technically two, three. That doesn't work. Um, four, five. I guess I don't need this. Yeah, let's run the bloodline. I want to go 9-7 in favor of green. We have two double white cards, though, but look at the split. We have so much more green. I think 9-7 makes sense, especially with Sprawl. Yeah. Okay. Fun little looking um, green-white enchantment deck. Didn't see any gluttons. That was the weirdest part. Would have been nice to get one or two of those, especially with all the fawn we have and the token that we have, but hopefully it's good enough. Off to round one. Ooh, that's a really nice hand. Turn one, Utopia Sprawl. Turn two, Tough Cookie with Royal Treatment backup already. Nice. And then we have the Yenna with the Sprawl and whatnot. Sweet. This hand wants a Season of Regrowth really badly. Hopeful Vigil, also good. Uh... I guess I lead on Hopeful Vigil here. Luna's Gate 
keeper. This is 100% worth it. Counter that and get a 3-3 now. In fact, I'm just going to go all in here. This is a 5-5 Vigilance Ward 1 when our opponent only has two lands right now, maybe three next turn. Well, that ain't going to be good enough. Let's get the fawn online. I don't need to hold up indestructible versus them. Because even if they have the Witch Stalker's Frenzy, they can't pay for the ward currently. And bounce is already going to get me anyways. Cards, the Gadwick's first duel, okay. Ooh, they've got the Curiosity Catapult, very nice. Well, they are going to take another five here. to kill them before they can stabilize. Kind of unlucky, we only hit two lands so far. The two lands that were in our opening hand. That's pretty good. So they're doing that main phase so that Yenna can't use her ability. Presumably. What is going on? There exists no land in my deck, apparently. Wow, what is happening? I mean, we're doing insane stuff even without having a third land, but this is insane. Okay. They should always be starting with drawing a card if they're planning on casting an instant or sorcery. Alright. Can I kill them? Very close. Jeez Louise. Where the hell are the lands? Let's copy our Utopia Sprawl. Found them. The obvious blocks, of course, are 1 5 on 4 4, 1 3 on 2 2. And then we get to go Moment of Valor, pump up Yenna, draw a card from Season. I don't even know how many cards that catapult drew. I guess it must have been five. Yeah. No way. I mean, gosh. What can you do, though? Missing so many lands. Jeez, one mana, four, five. Nice. Ugh.
Sheesh Louise. Another catapult, okay. You don't want to sack the food yet. That's good. Yeah, let's go Archon and attack with Cookie. They're going to chump with their 1-1. One, one. That was a conveniently timed 1-1 one, one token from them. Whoa! Oh, they must think that their fairy can't... Oh, wait, I have Trample. Ha <laughs> ha! Right. Monster roll. Okay. Nice. Oof. Well, I mean, our deck did a super cool thing. I don't know how we hit so few lands, but... Kind of funny. How many how many turns was I stuck on two land, but because we had Sprawl and the Fawn, we were... I mean... No, I'm, I'm running 16 land. It's not even like I'm shaving two or three lands. We're not running a 14 land deck or something. Yeah. Well, you do what you can, and we did what we could. And it was good enough. Go to game two. All right, decent hand. Just solid green-white stuff here. Candy Trail Double Topsy. Look at that. We already have as many lands as last game. Don't really care if they grapple. Feed the cauldron, sure. Let's get to... Um, mm. Yeah, let's get it online. We don't need the adventure mode here. Oh, right. I have a Wrath in this deck, too. Griffin Airy with food. There you go. They pulled it off. All that work for one 2-2 two, two flyer. They did it. Let's get our cookie and our fawn. So generally, you want to wait longer for Feral Encounter, right? Because you have to play that card this turn, so if you cast it on, like, turn three, you're generally not going to be able to cast anything with it. How dare you kill my cookie? I guess we're going to suit up the Acolyte and smack. And then next turn we can cast the Feral Encounter because we should be able to cast every creature in our deck with that. Indeed we can. Beautiful. Oh, it must be flooding out a bit over there though. Yeah, okay. They just had a bad draw. It was a decent enough opener for them, but they didn't do anything with it. You can see I've been uh, doing a lot better in this format. Our rank has climbed back up to the top eight. It was a rough start for sure. Again, I mentioned this on another video, but I have more 0-3s in this format than all of my other formats already. So... Rough start, but we are pulling back up. I think we're at closer to a, let's see, 63% win rate. And my all-time draft win rate is about 65%. So, got a couple percentage points to go, but improving for sure. The first 20 drafts, I only trophied once. Now we're at 5 in 30. So it's been going a lot better. But like I said, you need to draft basically the fast decks. The slow decks can get there, but you need the cards like Glutton or other strong ones like that, plus a lot of early interaction.
All right, game three. It's a little bit slow, but I'm not going to mulligan the hand. Uh-oh. Slow and five of our lands. I need to draw like a fawn here or something. Oh. Okay. Well, if I draw any more land, it's going to be kind of hard to win. Ooh, they have the Devouring Sugar Maw. I've only seen this once or twice, but it's really cool. Two mana to make a human and a food, and then it's a four mana 6-6 six, six Trample that you have to sack an artifact, enchantment, or token, otherwise it taps, but it does not take too much work to be able to do that, of course. Um... I think I'm just going to pass here and hold up the food activation so they can't attack with the protective parents. We can still go Archon into Sir Armont. Alright, I lie. Well, no, no, no. If they attack, I still get to uh, block. Yeah, I don't even know if they want to attack here. Still too many lands. Mm. Okay, I'll run out the Archon. It lets them attack with their protective parents, but next turn we can go Sir Armont onto Tough Cookie and smack him for five. Just race him in the air. Smack him for nine, rather. Five additional in the air. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, right. An additional... Yeah, more than that. Because the enchanted creatures also get the additional boof, uh, boof, boost beyond the monster roll. So, just a two-turn air clock. They have to hold up food if they don't have anything. Got Menace. One mana? What can you do with one white source? You can blow up a roll? I guess. Maybe it's not even right to do that. Maybe we just go animate. And if this is destroy whatever, draw a card. Yeah. And they still have to make some unfortunate blocks. So they're going to need to find five points of damage here. No, four points of damage because the hero roll. They're still dead on board to the flyer too. But they could have like, yeah, they could have four damage for sure easily. There's like the one mana plus two plus two trick, plus anything else. Probably a good sign for us if the witch is not attacking then. I mean, it sucks, but I'm going to have to attack into them having Kellen's Light Blades and hope it's just the food sacrifice and nothing else. Beautiful. And now these root, uh, root Rider Fawn are actually really good. They help me block 
in case they could somehow push, and they're also lethal on their own. So they need an answer to the Archon, and then all three of these are lethal. I think this is just an easy trade here for us. Uh, they messed that up. Oh, they have another break the spell? Okay. Kill their own enchantment, yeah. Wow. I'm flooding out, so, and they double topped, okay. There's the double black, they could have like a shatter. Yep. Incredible. That's really garbage. <laughs> Few too many lands. I needed just one more spell a turn or two sooner, and this was an easy win, huh? I mean, admittedly, they did get stuck on lands too, but... We needed that a long time ago. Six six menace trample. They have three spells left in their hand still. Oh, it hurts. Mm, hurts real good. Their deck's cool though. I was talking about Knight of Doves and how it never does anything, but it actually did a bunch here. They have two double two break the spells and a bunch of hopeful vigils. So I think I take six instead of light blading and sacking my season of growth. Because I kind of just need to hit a... <sighs> uh, okay, well. Kind of need to hit a targeted effect, I was going to say. Eh, dead to anything. They just attack with all and I die. GG. Uh, the classic screw versus flood. Screw versus flood. Screw always wins in those uh, the drawn out games. Ah! They played it well. I mean, nothing against them, obviously. That was just unfortunate. GG. A game with two lands being stuck and win. A game with nine or ten lands and lose. Sounds nice. No white sources, but who needs them? Probably going to lead on Tough Cookie turn two instead of Season. As we're on the play. Oh, yeah. And we're probably just want to get on the board versus an ag aggressive deck. We're hoping they don't kill the Cookie this turn with Torch. And then I'm able to uh, genealogist it next turn. Perfect. In fact, I'm happy to attack here, and if they want to double block, great. Sure. Deal. I think that favors us for sure. Belligerent's good. Planes here would be great. Planes for season into... Oh, well, that works too. Okay, any planes? Hello? <laughs> I take four. I need to draw planes.
Are you absolutely freaking kidding? Holy. Alright, I mean, at least it adds white. That's worth keeping, too, of course. And they didn't attack last turn, so I'm liking my chances. I wonder if they're on mono red or if they're also stuck on a color. I'm guessing they're on mono red. What? Oh my god, dude, this game. We're still winning currently, but that is absurd. Oh my lord. Three, six. Yeah, I'm gonna chump the genealogist here, I think. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, I'm probably okay to block here. Oh no, that's a trade because the ratter. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump. My hand is so solid that just preserving my life total makes the most sense. Hopefully they don't have another twisted. I don't think I was supposed to wrath there. It's a good draw, because that's a double creature this turn. Holy hell, the forests go away. I think I wait one more turn before I start attacking. So, how many lands did the Feral Encounter see? Four? Ten? Eleven, twelve? a good draw. Create a copy that's a token of it, except it isn't legendary. Man, this is just a waiting room for them to draw like a uh, crescendo or something. Yeah. Yeah, they're for sure mono red. They could have like a one splash card, but. Are they doing crescendo math? They might be. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, this is totally crescendo math. Okay, nothing. We can copy the vigil, which is kind of nice. Oh, wait, I should have been... Oh, what, what am I doing? I should have been copying the auras. Whoops. Because they're free. All right, need to start pressuring them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, two. Okay, here we go. Oh, pass again. Oh, that's good. So if I Sir Armand, I don't have the mana to hold up Moment of Valor. So what we can do is go like this. Copy the Beast Chill now. Good. So it's vigilance, so we get to still attack. Could have almost killed them there with a all-out attack, but I think it's a little bit safer to wait one more turn. Weird game. Hey! Okay, Black Splash. What is it going to be? Is it going to be like uh, Totentons? Voracious Vermin? Yeah. So if I kill the pack end of turn, they're only going to have four blockers. Oh, wait, you know what's... You know what I can do? Wait, I don't have enough mana. Five, six... No, I need, it, I need one more, like, white source or something. I could expel into moment... Or moment of valor, protect one of the creatures with indestructible, and then expel. But that doesn't seem right. So kill the edge wall pack. They have four blockers. But I can start putting some... Oh, that should be lethal. Monster roll here. Trampler. Copy the monster roll. Put it here. And that should be enough trample damage. And we can royal treatment to uh, pump up even further. Alright, that should be lethal. That was 5 in the air getting through automatically, and then 12 trample damage at its base. Oof! Some silly land rate. Wait, we won and we went up. Up the wrong direction, so to speak. All right, anyway. Some wonky land draws, but the deck is doing its thing pretty well. Yenna showing off nicely. Three and one now. Okay, so three and one. Let's go to game five. 
Let's do the thing again. Yes, thank you, Magic, for continuing to give me these hands where if I had one forest, it would actually be the Stone Cold Nuts. All right, we did it. What do we lose here? The Tough Cookie? I guess I'm going to lose the Fawn. And we're going to go turn two Season of Growth into Tough Cookie. For the Scry, plus hopefully the Protection effect versus it. Well, I'm not going to lie. The Fawn would be great here, but... <sighs> Forest, please. Okay, that's good. We'll, we'll lead with the Fawn then. Oh, man. Okay. Well, as long as my fawn doesn't die here, then keeping the interlopers makes sense. Plus, I mean, both the takedown and the royal treatment draw cards. Good. Good, good, good. Um... It's fine, but I think we'd rather bottom it. I'm not going to take down yet. I'm going to hold up the royal treatment this turn. Beautiful. Rewarded. Perfect. Sure. They're going to attack, make it a 3-3, and then I get to graceful takedown, kill it, and draw an extra card again. Love it. Now we can go activate, smack you for four. Well, four more. Ooh, they've got the Imidanes. Okay. Ah, well, I do want to put them on a two-turn air clock here, so I am going to attack for five. Because we have two blockers, and we're effectively at 18, so even if they play a creature plus the Imidanes, it's going to be really hard to actually kill us this turn. Fair enough. Hmm, so do I want to sack the food or save it for tough cookie? I think we can save it. chill. Sheesh. Yeah, we'll turn the... Oh, wait, I can just sacrifice... Oh, oh, what are they doing? That was really bad of them. I can sacrifice gain three life, and that counters their heart flame, dude. Oh, wow. No, that was great for us. Beautiful. That was perfect. I think they forgot, and I almost forgot that the tough cookie could sacrifice like a normal food. Sure.
All right, I mean, I think they're favored here, of course, because they probably have multiple threats. Yeah, I'm taking, what, eight this turn? Come on, scry me some action, baby. It's three lands we've seen to the bottom now already. they didn't sack a land first. They must have another play here end of turn. All right, deck. Come on. That's really good. That's really good. Let's grab the cookie back. And then draw the cookie. Scry one after. We want to draw first here. Bottom that. Cookie. Food. Scry one. Holy moly. This season of growth is doing me a huge solid. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, without those scries, there was no chance of winning. Easy double block. It's a weird attack if they don't have anything. Wow, that was really good for us too. Okay. Nice draw. Well, given I've been scrying so much, I should find some nice draws. That's a great draw, too. Oh, no! Are you kidding? Well, good beats. Not much you can do about that. Good beats. I mean, hey, we did what we could. We even went through a million lands, but... Oh, Emma Dane's recruiter, dude, and they got two of them. Man, these have been some crazy games for us. Just really bad land distributions. Maybe it didn't matter there all that much since they had double recruiter anyways. Yeah, um, so the only thing I could have done differently is maybe on that one turn I double blocked their creature. And then they used a trick and then I had to wrath afterwards. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what can you do? What can you do? We saw like 12 lands that game. Mm. Okay. Come on, come on. What, three and two? Let's go to game six. I'm gonna keep this. Remember, we not only have seven planes, we have three fawns and a utopia sprawl, so. You just gotta have heart of the cards, man, heart of the cards. Both players doing very similar things here. Uh, 
Uh, let's just draw a card. Playing out the two twos doesn't really do much. There's a lot of ramp and a oh, they're gonna kill my fawn. Okay, deck. Man, these games are so freaking brutal. What the hell, dude? You can tell I've been having a little bit of a rough time in a format when uh, I start getting tilted. But this has felt like a common occurrence draft after draft. Great draw by the OP. <sighs> I swear, if the game asks me if I had fun at the end, uninstalling, keyboard out the window. Like, I guess I have to kill their Welcome to Sweet Tooth now. Otherwise, they're going to put four or three 1-1 one, one counters. If I draw planes into planes, I think it's going to be really, really easy to win this game because... Well, I'm going to need to do it basically now. If we hit planes in the planes, we can win this. We should have probably attacked with our one ones there. Okay, there's one. There's one. All we want to do is buy time. So I'm going to go cookie plus vigil. Come on. Alright, I'm gonna need to draw it the planes this turn. This turn, it has to be this turn. <laughs> Alright, chump the non trampler, we go to three. Come on, planes, please! Planes probably wins the game, huh? Uh, we show them the Expel the Intruders that we can't cast. When you cast a spell like that and concede, it shows you the opponent the card. This was a frustrating draft. Every single loss felt very, very unfortunate. The, I think the deck was awesome. It was 16 lands, 3 Fawn and Sprawl, and we were having insane mana issues. I don't know, man. Cool deck, bad results. And you know what? You know what we say about that? That's magic, baby. All right, friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.